to HQ tutorial and in today's quick tutorial we want to take a closer look at custom states in bubble so custom states um, are actually a really powerful and useful functionality that not so many people use or not as much people as, as should use it um, but it really helps you when building applications and so we just want to show you um, what how, how they work um, what they are and how you can use custom states for different things within your bubble application so let me first of all define a bit what custom states are and um, if you have some kind of coding knowledge uh, and even not i'm just gonna give you the analogy it's like a variable okay so obviously in your in your bubble app you always have the database okay um, but sometimes you want to save data um, just for the current user for a certain time let's say for the current session okay so um, you don't want to save anything in the database you want to save something on the page you want to say all right let um, let me let me define this new thing called um, current menu and this current menu should be a value and we can constantly switch around this value and then do things according to that so this is what custom states are so think of it as storing data um, temporarily locally uh, and uniquely to each machine each browser okay so not even uniquely to users or really uniquely to each device even if you would open uh, if you have, have opened the app in a different tab it will be uh, the stay will be reset again okay so every time the page is loaded there's a unique instance of the state okay um, but the best thing with, uh, it's not talking about the theory uh, the best thing is to just start and showing you how these work so first of all an important information is every single element um i think every single element can have custom states in bubble okay um and how 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 do you add custom states well you just click on the element and as usually you have the element inspector so what we have right now here is a page we have a, a title a text and we have three groups group a b and c and we have our pages which is states okay and for all of these elements you can add a custom state all right how do you do that just again you have the element inspector here and then you go ahead here and click on this i or on this information icon okay and you can see it says custom state and you can say all right i want to add a new custom state to that just simply click that and it will ask you what is the state name okay so that will be kind of the variable name okay um and let's just call that um for example just or just test okay and then this can have a state type and the types are exactly the same as the database things or the database entries you can do uh, in your bubble database so obviously a text is a text number dates yes no which is boolean you can even add files as as, as it states uh, images and also really important you can add database things as states okay but well, we're going to show you how that works in a second okay um so let's go ahead and just as an example you do yes or no here okay so this is just a simple boolean then you can define okay what is the default value okay so you can say all right um when uh, every time the page is loaded on new there should be a default value and a default value should be no and will only change to yes if we change it to yes okay so a few things now you will always have access to the custom state um let's drag that a bit down by just taking a look at the exposed state of this element now so we can for example have the text here below and say all right so this is text custom states we want to always see the text custom states you can see test which is its state and we have access to that okay and we can say format as text yes and no okay so now if we preview that um, because the default state is no we can just take a look at that um, and the it should display no if the page is loading all right should be loading now so we have our title here custom state and the default state in this case is no okay so how do you change states well um, simple workflow step I'm just gonna add a button here um, and this is gonna say change state all right and when this is pressed what you want to do you want to go to element actions um, all elements you want to set the state which element you want to set the state of well in this case it's our te text custom states which state is it our test state what's the value yes or no in this case are the only options let's change it to yes 
okay? Um, and now if a user presses the state, the sta uh, this text, the button, the state will change and the state will be um, displayed here. And obviously this is not really useful right now uh, in this case, but you can do a lot of different things with that, okay? You can use the state in conditionals. Let's just preview that here. So I'm gonna click change state and now it's yes, okay? So let me go back, how, how can you use that? You could, for example, say, all right, um, I wanna add a conditional here. I wanna say conditional when the um, text custom states test state is yes. Well, then this element shouldn't be visible because when the state is already yes, we don't wanna change the state again, okay? So now what will happen is a user clicks the button, the state will change, the text displayed here will change and the button will hide according to the current state. And so this is a really useful way of kind of um, having conditionals on your page according to different situations, I would say. Okay, so now let's click change state. Bam, button is gone, has changed to yes, and yeah, works perfectly fine. Okay, so how can you use that? Well, you can use that in very, very different, various different ways. So for example, you can say, all right, um, I wanna create a menu. You could say, for example, okay, so I have a group here, um, and this group should be called, I don't know, my home menu, yeah? So you can create basically pages within pages and you can say this shouldn't be visible on page load, okay? But let's add a state to our page and let's call that menu, okay? With no default value and a state of type text and we can say, all right, this home page, which let's just add just a home text here so we know it's the home page. This home page should only be visible, oops, should only be visible when our states page menu is home. Then it should be visible. And you could do the same thing for all kinds of other pages. Let me just hide that. You can add a second page, let's call that profile. Okay, and we can say this is visible when our menu is profile. Well, and then how can we change the menu? Well, really simple. Let's this be our home, um, our home button, for example. Okay, we can say, all right, when this text home is pressed, we wanna set the state of our states page to home, okay? And same thing here, this should be profile. When this is pressed, we wanna set the state of our states page menu to profile, okay? And you can even add things such as a conditional to this group, we can say, all right, when states menu is, um, home, well then the background color should be green to show the user um, that, this is the that this is the current pressed menu. So it allows you to create interactions and save these interactions for the current session only, um, something which wouldn't re really be possible um, using database um, yeah, values. Um, obviously what you could do is you could define workflows for everything th saying, all right, when this group is clicked, I wanna hide all groups, show home and so on. But believe me, that will get really, really messy because for some applications you m might have, I don't know, 10 of these sub pages. And what you would have to do then, you would have to run a workflow when home is pressed, I wanna hide profile, I wanna hide listing, I wanna hide account, I wanna hide settings. So you have to run 10 workflows just to hide and then you can show home and believe me, that will get really messy and you will lose uh, all kinds of overview, okay? So let's just take a look at that. Our home page is missing, we don't see anything. So let's click on home. Perfect, so our home screen, which is this whole group here, is being shown now. Our home, uh, or it's shown that this is selected because this is green now. We can switch to profile and I forgot to change the text here, but you can see as the text is shifting, um, it works. So we have this way of changing menu immediately, okay? And obviously you could have could have whole different contents in these groups here. Um, and yeah, so really great way of, of, of doing that. Um, one last thing I wanna show you is that you can basically um, use, use database things, okay? So let's, for example, just create a new type here. I'm just gonna call that test um, with a field called test again, okay? And let's just create a few entries here just to show you. Test one. All right, test two. 
test three. Okay, and what we can what we can do, we can say all right, um, we want to have a repeating group, okay, and we want a user to ch to choose from all of the tests. So do a search for all tests, okay, and it should just be the um, full list, all right. And what we want to say, all right, this this should display the current cells test test, okay. Um, and we want to have a state for this repeating group. We want to have selected test, which is of type test. Okay, so this is a type of that. Uh, the type is now not the text. It's a type a data type. Okay, let's create that. And let's say, all right, when any of these uh, texts here is pressed, we want to set the state of the repeating group's test to whatever the current cells test is. Okay, really simple. And then we want to add a, add a um, we want to add um, um, a conditional. We want to say, all right, when repeating group test selected test is this text or is current cells test. Okay, so if, I hope that makes sense. If the current row is the same thing as the selected state of this repeating group, well then we want to have it uh, shown bold so the user knows he selected that. Okay. And now the last thing I want to do, I just want to add a group here, okay? And for this group, I'm going to say, all right, this group is of type test. And we'll have a title, which is be the parent groups test test. And let's maybe just have beneath that, I don't know, the creation date, something like that. We don't have a lot of data here now, but just the creation date, all right? And now we can say, all right, the data source, oops, should be the repeating groups test selected test. Okay, so the data content of this group will depend on what state this repeating group has, which will in turn be determined by which row is pressed by the user. So let's preview this now. This is a bit, bit more complicated, but still not hard, I would say. But you, you already see the maybe real life use case for this, um, having kind of like a menu. Uh, where a user can click through different options, listings, profiles, whatever, and then immediately the, the, the data, the result will be displayed below, okay? So we have our three data entries, which I created, test one, test two, test three. So let's click on one. Perfect, it works. This is bold, so we know we've selected that. The data is shown below. That's the time right now and the date. That's the title. Let's change that, change that, and so on and so forth. This doesn't change because we, we created them at the same time. But yeah, really easy way. And as the great thing is it's immediate. Um, with custom states, you don't have to create different pages which have to load. This is really an immediate way and of course, great user experience. So yeah, um, that was it regarding this uh, quick intro into custom states. Again, really helpful functionality, um, highly recommended. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and see you guys for the next tutorial of NoCoHQ. Bye.